Hey lovelies, I've had a lot of you ask how to cut, weed, and layer intricate designs, so I thought I would do a quick tutorial on how I do it. In this video, I will be showing you cut settings I use for various types of regular and specialty vinyls, as well as how to reverse weed from a tumbler and from transfer tape. Being able to create projects with intricate designs will absolutely not only help you increase your existing skills, but will also help you create more detailed items which can help set your work apart from others. With that out of the way, Let's get started. I've uploaded my design on Cricut Design Space and the first thing I need to do is resize it. But before resizing, I wanna make sure the dimensions are locked by checking the lock icon to make sure the design scales proportionately. If the lock icon is in the unlock position, simply click it and it will lock the proportions for you. I'm gonna rescale this design to 3.5 inches wide to fit a 20 ounce straight for this cut test. The design will upload as a grouped graphic so I want to ungroup the layers by right-clicking and selecting Ungroup. Next, I'm going to click off of the image to deselect all layers, and then I'm going to select and move the black layer to isolate it from the rest of the design. This is my most intricate layer, so I want to create a weeding box around that layer. I select the square shape from the left shapes menu and place it behind the design by right-clicking the square and then selecting Send to Back. Now I need to unlock the proportions so I can resize the shape to fit behind my design by clicking the lock eye contact and will use my mouse to resize the shape. When I'm happy with it, I select both layers by drawing a box around them with my mouse and select align and center. With both layers still selected, I choose the attach command from the bottom right menu. I want to make this layer black since I will be cutting it with black vinyl. The cut lines are also black though, so the cut lines will look like they disappeared, but they are still there. I'll be cutting two layers of the rainbow with the same vinyl, so I want to attach these layers together as well. I select the first layer and then press and hold shift on my keyboard to select the second layer when I click it as well. Now I can once again choose the attach command from the bottom menu to attach them. As you can see, they're now connected. I'm now ready to select Make to separate the project to its mats, and then I press Continue. I want to edit the layout for the gold and black layers to reduce waste. You do this by selecting your mat and clicking Edit. You can then adjust the layout. I'm repositioning the layers so they are stacked above each other for the gold mat, and for the black mat, I'll be adjusting the orientation of the charm chain by using the rotation tool. If you press and hold shift while rotating, it will fix the rotation so you can turn it exactly 90 degrees. The cut setting I'll be using for my most intricate cut is washi, and I will change the pressure to more. I'm using a 651 vinyl for this cut. For 631 or a more delicate cut, you may want to leave the pressure as default or even choose less pressure. For some of my other layers, I'll be using specialty vinyl like textured metallic and glitter. I'm just using the default setting for those vinyls. So the metallic vinyl setting for the metallic vinyl, the glitter vinyl setting for the glitter vinyl, and the vinyl setting for the 651, all with default pressure. When cutting an intricate design, you wanna make sure you're using a sticky mat and a sharp blade. If you aren't using these, you'll have issues with your design shifting and or tearing. As you can see, by using these settings, I was able to cut all of the layers of my design without losing or lifting any vinyl pieces or tearing the vinyl, even with the more intricate cuts. Before I start to weed my designs, I cut around each one to remove excess vinyl that may get in the way. This will make weeding far easier and also help reduce vinyl waste. Once the designs are cut out, I'm ready to start the weeding process. Before I apply the transfer tape, I prefer to remove any small pieces from the design, like the eyes and the skull, or the center pieces in the writing, because I find it a lot easier to remove them at this point in the process. Take your time with this, being careful not to accidentally lift or damage the wrong part of the vinyl. When all the center pieces are out, I remove the excess vinyl around the weeding box and apply the transfer tape. I can now apply the vinyl to the tumbler. After the vinyl has been applied to the tumbler and the transfer tape has been removed, press the vinyl firmly onto the tumbler to make sure you have good adhesion. This will help prevent the design from lifting, though it isn't perfect, so you'll still need to be careful. Slowly start to weed the design directly from off the tumbler, working in small, controlled sections, 
being careful not to lift any part of the design. Work slowly and use your weeding tool to help lift vinyl that isn't coming up that should be, or to press back down pieces of the vinyl that shouldn't be. After weeding this part of the design, I realized I lost the apostrophe in the word it's, so I thought I would show you what to do if you lose a small piece of your design like I did. In Design Space, I start by hiding all of the layers other than the black one, which is the one that has the apostrophe. I do this by simply pressing the eye icon on the layer I want to hide in the right side menu. This step is needed because the software will not send hidden layers to your cutting machine to process. When all of the layers are hidden other than the one I need, I select the black layer and detach the design from the weeding box by selecting Detach from the bottom right menu. Then I can hide the square, select the design, and choose Contour also from the bottom menu. The fastest way to contour your design is to start by selecting Hide All Contours. The system will then hide all cut elements but one, which is usually the largest. From the picture of the design, I select the apostrophe to reveal it again and then select the part of the design the software did not originally hide in order to hide it. Then I click X to exit. Now only the apostrophe is left to cut. I will select Make It to send the project to the machine to cut and will once again choose the Wash U Pressure setting. To weed the apostrophe from the rest of the vinyl, I just take a piece of transfer tape and burnish it over the design with my finger. When I peel back the transfer tape from the vinyl, only the apostrophe should be attached to the tape, and I can now line the apostrophe up with the rest of the design already on the tumbler and apply it. Another way to weed intricate designs is to reverse weed them directly from your transfer tape. When doing this method, I like to start the same way as I did before, by first removing the small middle cutout sections from the font, and then applying the transfer tape to the vinyl. Once the transfer tape is applied, use your burnishing tool and burnish it on really well. You want to make sure the vinyl is securely adhered to the tape to help keep the more delicate pieces in place. You can now remove your backing paper and slowly begin to weed your design following the same procedures as I described when weeding the design from the tumbler. Now that your decals are successfully weeded, you can start to layer them. If you have a light board and you didn't have to reverse weed your bottom layer of vinyl so it isn't already covered in transfer tape, one method I find that works really well is to use a light board to help you see the decal on the bottom through your top decal's backing paper. You start by placing your bottom decal onto the light board and then you take your top decal and remove the backing paper and cut it in half. This will make it possible to apply. Replace your backing paper, making sure you are putting it back on the correct side of the paper so your vinyl won't stick to the wrong side, and then place it on top of the bottom layer. With the light on, you will be able to see the bottom decal through your top decal's backing paper. Line up the decals, remove one half of the backing paper, and layer the top design to the bottom. Then remove the backing paper from the first half and repeat the process on the other side. If the bottom layer of your decal was weeded on the tumbler, you can also layer on the tumbler. I like to layer in small sections, especially when dealing with a curved surface, because sometimes the layering starts center, but then it goes off center as you lay it down. I start by completely removing the backing paper from my top layer 
and lining it up to one side of the bottom layer. I start placing the decal down, lining it up as I go. Once I notice it isn't lining up properly anymore, I press down the letters I've placed and lift the transfer tape. Then I realign the next section with the second half of the design and complete the layering process. Since I work in small sections, when it comes to a design like the rainbow, I piece together my design one layer at a time. Working in small sections allows me to more easily make corrections and I find I get much better end results. I try to pick a place on the bottom decal design that lets me line the other layers up to it. In this case, I'm using the bottom line of the rainbow. I begin with the most intersection and work my way outward, being careful that each time I place a new layer, I am lining it up to the same bottom line. When it comes to designs with multiple layers like this, you may find it easiest to have a photo of the design with you or to have the image of the design up on your screen for easy reference. For the metallic vinyl, I had to use a strong grip transfer tape, so I'm starting by using my scissors to trim away as much of the excess tape as I can so I don't accidentally lift any of the already applied decals from the tumbler when I apply this layer. Since this layer has two sections of the rainbow, I'm really taking my time to make sure the sections of the top layer are even with the bottom line of the black layer. If it doesn't line up, I will have difficulties when it comes to laying the section of the rainbow that fits in between these pieces. Taking your time with the layering process will give you much more accurate results and will ultimately save you work and time in the long run. Since I was careful with my other layers, this last section of the rainbow fits in place perfectly and all the sections of the design line up. To complete layering this design, I remove the backing paper for the charm chain and hover it over the rainbow design. I slowly line it up at the three points where the design attaches to the rainbow and press it into place. After I removed the transfer tape, I noticed I had a small part of the top of the chain sticking out above the rainbow, so I took a sharp X-Acto knife and trimmed away the top piece so it was even with the rest of the rainbow. And that's it! Here's the final result for this design. If you learned anything or found value in this tutorial, please be sure to give it a like, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me continue to produce tutorials like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with more tutorials.